So we call this gathering the art of allowing, and it really is the art of closing that gap. It's the art of allowing myself in my physical human form to be what life has caused me to become. It's the art of releasing resistance and allowing the energy that creates worlds to flow through me. It's the art of coming into vibrational alignment, not only with who I was before I was born, but who I have become since. It is the art of coming into vibrational alignment with the pure positive energy being that I am constantly in the state of becoming you get this so when you have feelings of unfulfillment when you feel not enough when you feel dissatisfied that means you're just not letting yourself get up to speed with you so now you've heard this story of who you are and now we want you to get the fuller sense that this story of the cycle of life which represents you from non-physical coming into physical giving birth to new thoughts that the non-physical part of you becomes as you begin to understand this cycle of life that law of attraction is at the heart of then you begin to understand the eternal nature of your being we are all eternal beings and you are on the leading edge giving birth to new expansion and source immediately becomes it how good is that well we say from our vantage point it is magnificent and from your vantage point when you let yourself be up to speed with it you think it is magnificent too but when life causes you to be something that you don't for whatever reason let yourself be then it beats up on you pretty good Imagine taking your canoe down to the river's edge and putting it in the water, very fast moving river, and you have your oars inside and you deliberately point your canoe upstream and begin paddling very hard against the current. And we say, why not turn and go with the current? Why not turn and go with the flow? And most humans say, to tell you the truth, it never entered my mind. <laughs> because everyone I know who wants to amount to anything is trying harder than that that just seems lazy and so I have positioned myself you say I have a really good boat I have a really good oars see how they're hooked onto the edge there I have moleskin on my hands and I have muscles and even more I have determination and I learned it from my mother who learned it from her mother it's what we all do we try harder and we say but how long can you keep it up and you say till death do us part <laughs> you say, I don't know how long but all of the rewards Abraham all of the rewards and statues and monuments are given to those who really try hard and I want some of those and then you often remind us that you have heard that there are more rewards after you die for those who really try hard. So you work hard to convince us in the appropriateness of paddling against the current. And we always listen lovingly because we understand your perspective. But then we have to eventually stop you and say to you something that we want with everything that we are for you to hear. Nothing that you want is upstream. nothing that you want is upstream not one thing that you want is upstream and you know how we know that because we know the cycle we know who you were before you were born we know what your life has caused you to do in launching rockets of desire and we know that the source within you has become the vibrational equivalent of what you're asking for and we know that law of attraction is responding to that powerful pulsing vibration and we know that that's what causes the current a woman said to us one day not long ago she went to lunch with her children and came back to the seminar and she was the first one that we called to the chair to ask a question and she said my child asked me to ask you a question why are grown-ups so grumpy <laughs> and we said because the longer you live the more you find to fuss and worry about the longer you live the more you find things you do not want and the more things you shout no at and the more things you shout no at the more you turn against the current Jerry Nestor had the delightful experience a few weeks ago of going whitewater rafting on a wonderful river in Colorado it was a very fast moving river it was classed as four rapids so it was a really moving river 
And as they were approaching the river, as they were driving alongside the river in the bus with all of the others, with the boats on top, up the canyon, Jerry and Esther looked at this river and said to one another more than once, we must be out of our minds. <laughs> It was a raging river. The water was spiking so high over some of the big boulders and around the bridges and such. And as they put their raft into the water, they were with friends. Six of them went together. And then there were many other rafts that were with the same river company who were all high school wrestling teams. <laughs> Their friend who had invited him on this trip, her daughter said to him as he left the house that morning, did you tell them how old you all are? <laughs> as they put their boat into the water, it was evident to them right away that there was no value whatsoever in attempting to paddle upstream. It did not even enter their minds because they could see that that river was going to have its way with them. And the man who was teaching them what to do, who was the guide in their raft, said to them, friends, this is not Disneyland and we cannot turn this river off. And the reason that he was telling them that is because he knows the power of the river. He knows the force of the river. He pointed out these big rock pilings and he said to them, we don't want our raft to get wedged in those rocks because if that happens, the river will just beat us up. And then he called them to page five, paragraph three of the disclaimer they had signed <laughs> that made it absolutely obvious that the likelihood of their survival was almost none. <laughs> Esther refused to read it. She read the first paragraph and said, I take your word for it. The reason that we are giving this to you in this way is because we want you to understand that your river is like that. You can't turn it off. Your river was flowing before you even came forth into this physical body. And the longer you live, the faster it flows. Because every time you live in experience, you ask for something more. And every time you ask for something more, source becomes it, the source part of you. And every time the source part of you becomes it, law of attraction responds to it. And every time law of attraction responds to the you that is in the process of becoming, your stream moves faster. So do you know that you could have the same negative thoughts that you developed when you were four or five or 10 or 15 or 20? You could have the same negative attitude about something. It doesn't need to have changed at all. But 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years later, that negative attitude that hasn't changed at all is taking a much greater toll on you because your stream's moving faster. And law of attraction says it can't stand still. It is changing. So if you've been beating the drum of something that you don't want, then that vibration within you is getting stronger and stronger. At the same time, your asking is getting stronger and stronger. So do you see what you're doing? You're causing your stream to go faster on that example. And you are also refusing to go with the stream. That's what negative emotion is. That's what negative sensation is. That's what disease is. Even children who get sick, are experiencing sickness because their life is causing them to want something that they don't believe they can have. In other words, when you have that powerless out of control feeling and something really matters to you and you have a belief that says, I can't get what I want to get. You put yourself in this impossible position because there is a tug of war going on within you energy wise that does not serve you well. Now, the good news is, doesn't matter where you are at any point you can turn and go with the flow at any point in fact do you know you don't even have to turn and go with the flow just let go of the oars the stream will turn you sometimes you listen to us as we crow about all of these good feeling emotions appreciation and love and joy and passion and all of that good feeling stuff up here and it makes you think that under all conditions and at all costs you should turn your boat around put a motor on it and get down there to the good feeling emotion as fast as you can and we say we want you to get down there where it feels better and better but because we know the power of the stream we are not urgent feeling about your getting down there we know if you'll just stop doing that thing you do that's got you pointed against the current that the current will turn you and take you we also know that you don't have a choice 
You can't be up here because something has happened. Something's happened to someone you love or something's happening in your own life experience. You want something, you can't figure out how to get it. You're depressed or feeling enraged or angry or any negative emotion. Doesn't matter what you call it, fear. You can't in your state of negative emotion, all of a sudden just turn your boat around and speed right down there to where it feels good. You can't do that. And you don't have to do that. All you have to do is stop paddling upstream and the stream will carry you.